This is an overview of the Rumbus Grid Widget by Limited Elements for Elementor. What this widget does, it adds a unique grid style to your content in the website. And as you guys know, this is going to uh, support remote controls, syncing to other widgets. And we're starting to introduce all sorts of cool features like sequence animation that you see over here. Over here, you can see an example that we're populating this with WooCommerce products. So I'm just going to jump in and get started without no more further ado. Let's get started. To get started, drag and drop the Rumbus Grid widget into your Elementor Canvas. What this widget does, it shows your content in a Rumbus Grid layout. As you can see, this is how it looks like and it supports multiple rows, multiple columns, and you can even choose the source type over here. So this is one of our first widgets that we're releasing multi-source in our widgets and let's look at what we have inside of this drop down and as you can see you can populate these items using post using woocommerce products acf custom fields a json or csv file terms or taxonomies wordpress users wordpress menu or even instagram images so just to show you how you can manage the content over here you can just change the source type and then it will populate the images from that source that you have chosen then it will add another section for that source so for example if it's instagram it's showing the instagram source over here and you can see that over here it determines how many items it's showing so for Instagram type, if I want to show just five items, I change that to five, and then you can see just five items. And you're going to need to start playing around with this to see the different options in each source type. So the basic source type is items. I'm going to go over items, and then I'm going to show some advanced usage using post, which these are the two most common use cases in most cases but of course it depends on your use case so over here in items we have the different items this is a regular elementor repeater field we can delete items by clicking the x over here we can duplicate items add new items reorder items by drag and drop and when you click on an item you can start editing that item let's go over the settings of each item so over here, we have an option to show a title and text. Right now, we cannot see the title of text because inside of the general settings, these are off. So later on, I'm going to show you how you can turn that on. But over here, we can add these. Another thing that you can add is a graphic element. So right now, it's set to none. We don't see any element above our uh, grid items. I'm just going to change this to icon and you can see a blank circle over here i'm going to choose an icon so let's say this icon and now you can see that icon inside so that's how you can determine a graphic element let's go over this once again we can add an icon an image so inside of this circle it can be an image on top of an image or later on i'll show you how you can leave the background uh, just as a solid color and not only as an image and we can also add text. For example, a, a good use case for text is when to, you want to add numbers. So 0, 1, 0, 2, and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to change that back to none because in my use case, I don't need those graphic elements. And another cool thing that you can do over here is add a link type. So we can add a regular link. This will link the whole box. So if I had a regular link, I have a link field. And then when I click on the whole box over here or the whole grid item, it will be linkable. Another option is to use a light box. What a light box will do is use this image 
and make it open in a light box. So once a user clicks on it, it will open in a light box. Let's see a preview of the page. So let's go over here, save and preview on the small eye icon. And now you can see how that looks inside of a light box. So this can really serve you as a regular image gallery. You don't need text, you don't need icons. If you just want to show some images, you could do that as well. So really cool. And another option is to show buttons. So we can show a button over here. Let's add some text to the button. So I'm going to change that to learn more. And now you can see that it's a button. And again, we have a link field. You can populate that link field and then this button will be linkable. So you can add a graphic element and a button and some text between those. So let's actually turn on the text right now. I'm going to jump into general and over here you can see we have show title and show text. I'm going to turn show title on and now you can see that we have titles in each one of the items. So that's pretty cool and a really cool use case. And of course, as I said before, you can also add some text. I didn't add any text inside of the item. So even if I turn this on, you're not going to see any text, but this really can be sort of as icon boxes or content boxes just in a really cool layout. So once we're done with the items, we can jump back into the general settings and let's go over the settings over here. So over here, we have an option for columns count. As you can see, there's one, two, three over here. Let's change this into two and see how that looks. Hmm, that looks kind of interesting. And let's jump into gap. So as you can see, there's a really, really, really small gap over here. Let's change that to 20 pixels. And now you can see that the gap is bigger. And this is starting to make the grid look a little bit more interesting. We have also content gap. This is for the gap between the content inside of here. So if I just make that larger to 20 pixels, you can see that now we have 20 pixels between the content items inside of our grid item. So very cool, very awesome. As you can see, eh, everything is looking great. Let's jump back into items. I want to show you some more stuff over here. Now, as you can see, this is separated into styles and into background. So over here in background, we can edit the background. And for example, this item over here, I'm just going to turn off the background and now it's taking a background color. This is set in the general style, but you can also give each item a different background color. To do that, you just click on override background color. And now the background color is coming from the override inside of the background tab. Very cool. Very awesome. You can make some really cool effects. Jump into our demo on our website to understand how that works. Now let's do some more advanced stuff. Let's go into source and over here, I'm going to change the source to posts. So right now you can see it's populating the items with posts, which is really, really cool. These are coming from my WordPress posts. And of course, if you're familiar with unlimited elements, you can see that it's added this section over here, which is items post query. And you can populate this with any custom post type. So if you have a different plugin creating a different post type, you can also use custom post types, or maybe you created your own custom post type. You can even add pages and products, whatever you want over here. You can see that. And of course, this is some advanced query options. We have many ways that you can include posts or exclude posts to show the exact posts that you want on the page. Awesome. So as you can see over here in source, you can also determine what's going to be the title source. Right now it's taking the post title, but you could even choose a different source type for that specific uh, element inside of the grid item. Very, very cool. 
And of, for example, link source, we're going to want to use the post URL. So once a user clicks on this, it's going to go to that specific post. Very cool. And I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add another column over here. Let's jump into the grid. I'm going to make it one column. So we have some uh, items over here. Now, if you want to show less items and we're using posts as a source, I'm going to go to post query and I'll change the number of items to four. So we have only four items over here. Okay, that's looking good. Now, what I eventually want to do is actually connect this to a carousel. So what I'll do, I'll jump into connect widget settings and I'm going to enable remote connection and enable sync. This will allow me to use remote control widgets to control our carousel and will allow me to sync this to a different widget, which uh, what I'm going to use is going to be a post carousel. So let's search for post carousel. And as we did before, I'm just going to change the column to one because I want to see only one. As we did before, I'm going to enable remote and enable sync. So what that does, it's going to actually sync between these two. Now, if you want to sync between these two, you're going to need to have the same number of items. So as you can see, there are a lot of bullets over here and over here only four. So I need to jump into post query once again and choose four just so we have the same number of items in both of these. And now you can see there's not a red border that's showing an error over here. Now, to see the selected item on the left side, you can see that it's uh, sort of growing once they, uh, they're they moving over here. But if I want to, I can jump into style. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to add a background image hover grow. So let's turn that on. That will just make the effect a little bit more uh, prominent. And another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to change the opacity. So let's push down the opacity over here. I'm going to push it down a lot. And now you can see that only the active item on the left side is um, showing the full opacity, which is the active state. So that's really, really cool, right? And what else I think I'll do is I'm going to Let's make this column a little bit less wide. So let's go over here into column width and make it 30%. Let's jump into the settings over here in columns gap and make that wider. So just so we have a nice little looking layout over here and jump back into the style. Let's make the background color black just so you can really see how this is going to look and let's preview this in the live page so save and preview and now you can use these as buttons to navigate your carousel sliders tabs whatever you can think of because inside of unlimited elements the possibilities are really unlimited just as we're called so really cool if we're already in the style tab over here you can see that we have all the styling options if you want to change the title the text the button if you had a button in case you had a button and uh, the graphic element in case you have a graphic element turned on because we're using post of course these options uh, are not available if you want the graphic element and the button to be available all you need to do is use items instead of post so I think I'm going to wrap this up and uh, actually let's show a couple of last things. Another cool feature that we're starting to introduce in all our item based widgets is sequence animation. What this will do, it will animate the items uh, in a sequence gradually to the page. So let's change this to appear and you can see uh, you're going to be able to see how this works. Let's just save this. And you can see it over here. Let's also refresh over here. So it's gradually animating the, um, the items into the page. 
And the options that you have over here is animation duration and the delay between the different uh, items, the order, if you want to add a blur or not, and of course, uh, how fast you want this to be. So this is really cool. This is also, you can choose just like uh, the type of effect that you want. So for example, I chose from bottom, so they're animating from the bottom. So really, really cool stuff. And another important thing, in case we're using posts, you're going to be able to add pagination and filtering. So if you're not familiar with unlimited elements, we have a lot of types of filters. We have pagination and we have many, many types of ways to filter the posts on the page in case you're using posts. Of course, this can also work with um, a different source type, which is also WooCommerce. So WooCommerce also works with filters and uh, pagination and all that stuff. So really, really cool stuff. And of course, as I said, we're going to start introducing these features into all our item-based widgets. So if you want this specifically in a different widget that you have inside of Unlimited Elements, and you want us to push out the update even faster, write us in the comments which widget you want us to add this to, and we're going to add it. If you have any suggestions how you think we can improve or questions, you can also post those in the comments. And if you know us guys, you know that we're very responsive and we take care of our users. So I want to thank you guys for joining and I'll see you in the next video.